so hi guys welcome back to my channel today we have come to Adda to visit the Chinchim Museum so what I'm gonna do is take you guys out on a tour uh, I'm just gonna quickly show you guys it's basically like a dinkra you know the prints of Ghana and things like that and as you can see you can see all these prints right here on the wall and I'm gonna go around and show you the sculptures and the statues and what they represent so I hope you enjoy this video and as we go along I will explain a little bit further so come with me let me show you the prints on here so they've got all these um, I think there's men blowing trumpets you've got the fun and saber spiders All these are like prints that you can have on your cloth. Um, and then you've got this female and male upside down uh, kind of statue, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm gonna go inside, have a tour around, and then we're gonna end up back here. So see you guys soon. Yes, after. So welcome to the Chinchim Museum. Thank you. How do you what say does, that in Chinchim? What does in Chinchim mean? In Chinchim. Yeah, That's in how you say it. Yeah. No, it's one of the Dinkra symbols, Ghanaian Dinkra symbols, and that is the symbol over there. And it means um, twists and turns of life. Mm -hmm. ah. yeah. Life journey is not actually a straight route, you know. It has to do with curves and bends. And it also um, symbolizes the, the journey that our ancestors had. Those that were taken into slavery about 100 years ago, you know, they didn't really have a straight route to where they took them to so this describes the agenda that they had in Chin Chim. So okay. that's the name of the museum. There's really a lot better than our portrait. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lot, yeah. Lot in our yeah. So in Chin Chim Museum must be here story, for four years now. For four years? Yeah. Are you here four years, yeah. Wow. Four years? Yeah. Chin Chim installation, that was the name initially. It started as a project and backed on by my boss. About ten years ago he wanted to use his um, art skills to pay homage or respect to our ancestors. He realized that um, our ancestors who were taken captive and um, sold into slavery have lost, like their stories have not really been told the right way. He wanted to create a memory or memorial for them. So he started creating sculptures, sculptures to honor them. So he was holding exhibitions here and there in Accra. He did an exhibition in then Chroma Park, um, Asha Fort in Accra, did a final one at the Cape Coast Castle and decided to um, create um, a permanent place. Who again? Who's doing this again? Kwame oh, okay. yeah, your boss. Yeah, our boss, he's the creative director. So he wanted to find a permanent place for his installation. So we decided to choose Ada. And according to history, Ada used to be one of the slave routes yeah. when they were buying the slaves. From they have okay. uh, all over, especially from the north. Not all yeah. the way. Then, yeah. then go as before they go into the castle. So they were using different routes. So Adan used to be part of the routes, but just that we don't have any Ooh, physical sorry. remains because it was closed. They, they had built a fort at the um, coastal area, but I think the rain, the sea has washed it. Okay, so this is here to replace that part of our history. So basically, we we are using visual arts to educate to inform and also to preserve our culture and our heritage as Africa Africans. Culture, yeah. So we are mostly using the visual arts but we also have the performing arts. We have a cultural troupe that actually do um, drama and singing and dancing for us, especially when we have a bigger occasion. You know, when we, we have, have a, a, occasion, a big group uh, visiting us, you might welcome them with the traditional drums and um, our yes, traditional so we started the tour proper with an explanation of what we have here right in front of us so these are three monuments and the first one is what we call sudano sahelian monument sudano sahelian monument and it is found in the sub-saharan africa around that area and this represents the civilization that used to exist so many years ago before the invasion of the Europeans. Actually, if you go to 
that part of Africa, these were constructed using red clay and they used those red clay to make bricks and they were putting in some of these woods and it's one of their traditional architectural styles and when you come to Ghana, you go to the northern part of Ghana, the Larabanga Mosque, yeah. there's a similar structure or architectural styles right. over there. Yeah. Uh -huh. So since you are doing something um, using Africa art forms, you are trying to not only use things in Ghana here but all over Africa. So the Sudano Sahelian monument on it, there are so many symbols on it, which most of them are, are the class symbols in Ghana here. And we also have created some of the symbols so we can get close to it. So the Sedia, that used to be the medium of exchange um, in the ancient times. There are um, some of the traditional class symbols we have. That of the crocodile, the two crocodiles that have been combined, and it's one of the proverbs that is known in Akan that um, Odenchem, Odenchem, you know, Mudidia, a Fubakum. If we look at the image, two crocodiles have been combined, they all have different entry of food or mouths or heads, but after all, they all feed themselves, it all enters the same stomach because they've been um, crossed so after they are done eating it all ends in the same thing we talked about one of the units and there are so many of these on it and right behind us here is what we call the obelisk obelisk, obelisk. yeah it's also found around ethiopia and zimbabwe why right, does it have the slow animal okay so on the obelisk that is also our chinchim symbol we have actually stylized it yeah. Uh, so on it, to there are certain um, characters or symbols on it. We have we have used um, certain animals that are common here in Africa and in Ghana. So we have that of the snail, tortoise, and we have footprints too. That all come with um, a lot of meaning. So for the tortoise, you know, tortoise and snails. Slow pace animals. Yeah, slow, slow pace. pace animals, and this talks about endurance or patience. And you know, symbols used to educate us so many years ago. So it is teaching us um, endurance and patience in life. Sometimes you have to endure certain things that you face in life. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about the ant, it represents wisdom. You know, yeah. how yeah. Yeah. they use yeah. Um, Definitely. Yeah, their wisdom to create some of these cup worlds. I'm intrigued about what the spider represents. <laughs> yeah. <Come on>. Greed. <laughs> no, no, there were spider, spider webs. Spider. You see how. Did I say ants? Yeah, the you first said one I said ants. Okay, sorry. It was yeah. ants means wisdom. Yeah, yeah. And the spider That's talks fine. about how hardworking they are using their. So no, ants should have been hardworking and spider wisdom. Wisdom. Yeah. So how they are able to create the cup webs? Yeah. yeah individually or in the group. And if yeah. you look at the footsteps here, it talks about life's journey. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes where someone thinks that he or she has been able to make it in life that's where someone might be starting, starting from. from so if you look at some of the first steps pointing downwards either still pointing up it all represents life journey as mm. a whole we have, all have the, the individual aspirations wow. uh -huh. so that is the you know some of these integrated designs on it and if you come to this side we have our 25 feet monument called 25 feet. yeah almost all of it is here 25 feet so this is what we call lukasa lukasa yeah it is actually found in dr congo and it is made by the people of luba so we call them baluba baluba yeah and we have this um, misconception that misconception that africans were not actually recording it we were just doing it orally but um this lukasa educate us that um those days they used to record their history so what they were using was the reason this uh, city and the car is that was what they were preserving their histories and their events so instead of probably writing currently we write with many people they were rather putting the city on this in casa and it was actually a one foot wood carved um, at four so these were kept by the kings and the leaders in the village and every happening or event that takes place, they will mark it with one of these cars. And in generations to come later, they can use that to interpret what has previously happened. So that is the 
general meaning of Lukasa. Um, there's a story about how a goat met the goat. Hey. Hmm? How a goat <laughs> met the goat. A punch. That's a punch. So um, these goats were in their jungle, in their universe. So you can see about four goats here. Two of them here. One, the branches over there. There's another one there. So they're all wandering and trying to search for success or good yeah okay. in their in their own world mm. so to them to be successful you have to climb higher than the normal earth level or the ground level so this one high. over Even there the goat, no. has <laughs> been able to go on higher kakra but that's not enough so they're all wondering so one of them wandered and rather came to the side so behind that the oh, one that has been able hey. to make it <laughs> on the top of the roof wow. and to them in their world we were able to make it to this peak of Pinnacle. Successful. That is the most successful <laughs> goat in the neighborhood. And yeah. she is classified yeah, as the goat greatest of all time, as yeah. we um, oh. used to refer to <laughs> some celebrities there. and some stars. Nice. Yeah. So that is the greatest of all time. Yeah, and from where she is standing, she can see the world. The rest of the world. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So that is the shoe man. So um, you can see that one of them, one of the goats, this one who was able to discover this one, had tried several times. That's the first steps yeah. on the wall. Oh, Anytime she tries, can't get up. Yeah, she falls. So the she made it. If only the goat could hold that. Yeah. Like so she, she decided to. You know, have a dialogue with them, one with the success. So uh, a conversation started between them. She asked her up there that how were you able to get to where you are? And our heritage. And with that knowledge, it can help us to discover ourselves or make it as Africans. So that is the moral lesson of how the good men the good. Kinga, it's found also in DR Congo by the people of Bakongo. And the Kinga means the cycle of life. So the cycle of life is represented by this big black circle. Mm -hmm. And they believe that life is in four phases or four stages. So life is three or four times. Yeah, so we have indicated that with these small circles. So it means that the first circle, the small circle, means um, um, sunrise, that is morning. And it represents birth. And the second circle means um, afternoon or noon. And it represents when you get to your adulthood stage. And the third circle means sunset, when you get to your old age. Yeah. And you know, when you have lived all your life and you get to old age, what happens next? You die. You die. You die. So that is the, um, the, the fourth um, circle it represents um, when you enter into midnight. So that is midnight. And Africans, we believe that when you die, you go into the underworld and some of them believe that there's reincarnation. So you go, you come back to life and live. So that's like the cycle. 
And the others that believe that it ends when you die, yeah. and that's the street line. That's what it means. And you realize that there are these animals, like why, tortoise. Why does the crocodile have a fish and the tortoise? Yeah, that's all the tortoise. And the tortoise, the crocodile, and the fish. And it is also one of the local Adinkra symbols or proverbs. The proverb says that, say, Ah. No matter how big the fish grows or becomes, it becomes food for the crocodile. That's why the fish is in the mouth of the crocodile. And these animals have different characteristics or personalities. The tortoise, when it sees danger, can crawl back to the shell. Or even when you touch it, it just crawls back to the shell. But for the crocodile, when she sees danger, she will have to fight her by herself. She has to retaliate, respond. So they are very aggressive and very wild. And look at fishes too, some of them very calm. So that's why the fish finds herself in the mouth of the crocodile. So I, I didn't ask you which personality are you? I'm the, the I'm crocodile, the, turtle. the tortoise, mm -hmm. or the fish. So Everybody talks wants about. to be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not wild. I'm okay. pretty, okay. yeah, I'm pretty laid back. A long life journey, you meet people with some of these uh, personalities. And we have this installation here that depicts or symbolizes the economic activities here in Adan. So we find ourselves in the land of Adan. We have four to five poles here. Out of creative genes, So these, the drawback. these are talking about. Um, economic activities here in Adan. Mm. So Adan is mostly into fishing and farming. So the first one indicates someone who is on his boat fishing. I know that when they get their harvest of fishes, they bring it to the seashore, to the various marketplace. So this is a woman fishing. So that's what we see here. The woman is trading with her fishes in the marketplace. So the third one talks about um, food. Talks about food. You know, after hard days, but they come back to the village they have to prepare their food. And they are like one of their favorites. So that's someone preparing food for the family. So, which is one of our main foods in Ghana. It takes more than one person to prepare. And you know, when they are done preparing it, they have to also come together to enjoy. And, and these woods um, have been taken from the various marketplaces. And um, wow. there are these two markets. Yeah, that when you go to the market, they use it to chop their fishes. Yeah. yeah. So we are just trying to preserve history or culture because maybe in the next 50 years you might not find some of these woods in the market being used to chop fish so these are all here to preserve our culture and history So hey guys, welcome back again. Like I said, uh, so these are some of the statues. Uh, in order for you to get inside, you need to pay a fee of 40 Ghana cities. I'm going to try and convert that into pounds and dollars. Uh, but this is pretty much the entrance after the introduction that I've just done. Um, and then I think we're going to go on a tour and go inside that way. And then I'm going to show you what's in there. So. I'll see you guys soon. Imagine that you're walking through. They give, they give this princess, Japanese blossom. It's out here when you're walking in Central Park, innit? It's It's Central Park, innit? Chimp. <laughs> um, as you can see, it's a beautiful layout here. 
Um, so yeah. From. Yeah, so the studio fits the museum with all the artwork that you have here. So myself, I am an artist, part of the sculptors. So I've been sculpting everything that is you have about five to six artists led by our boss. So, so you is, made all this, you were five years old and made all this the sculpture. Yeah. So it all begins from the studio. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, say that again. Who who is he? Um, so Frater the first, he the was first a lawyer, lawyer mm -hmm. one of the first lawyers in Ghana, and also a chief. He happened to be a chief of chief, and happens to be the grandfather of our current president, Sanado. Hmm. It is difficult, dearie. Ain't nobody do that. Is it? Really? Yeah. What, what kind of barber is this? Bro, you know, say you didn't say we yeah. barber tree. I thought you said the other one be barber. Right? Yeah. So it is a barber tree, and that's the fruit. The fruit of your labor. Wow. So this is the fruit of your labor. See now. So this is the fruit of your labor. Oh yeah, you can walk there. So we are here at the. Chinchim installation where we have the faces and heads of our ancestors here. So these have been created to serve as um, remembrance for us and also to preserve that part of history for us. So we have over 1,005 heads currently here. Thousands of lives. Okay, so these are real volunteers. Yeah, real oh, faces. Wow. That is in the water represents those that drowned in the rivers and the lake and the ocean when they were being taken using the ships. I have so, a okay. So, on it, yeah, there are a lot of women and children and children along it. This talks about children not being left out on the whole slavery narrative. Some of them. Their parents gave birth to them whilst on the ship. Mm -hmm. Others too were raped by the white slave masters. And that's why we have this part of the installation with a lot of kids and women. So how did you get the water? The water is actually, um, you have to depend on the water and also pots. Oh, yeah. You buy water too and you have your construction. A tank here so that you will feed in the What we have here was inspired by Insidia or Insusuo. You have this clay fired work over the pot in Insidia, and this is what inspired Kwame to create this kind. And the meaning of this today is that in the ancient account, when someone dies, they create one of these heads and put it on the grave of the person. Those days, there are no photographs. So one of these would represent the dead person. And so it's actually for They all actually look like faces in the ancient graveyard. Yeah, it, it means too. you have a lot of plants, you need a lot of plants. So that's the traditional version of the Sudan. So this is the contemporary or the modern one.
in CBD is communication symbol that was used by the ancestors back in the day. Oh, he had the story. No, no, no. it would be great to hear. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Oh, you're talking about the. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, they're from the Quakers, then. Yeah. They're encouraging each other to get more knowledge about Africa. Right. So, even on the eyebrow thing, there's a plaster there. As a result of. Um, oh, like Mayweather and shit. You know, mm. you're telling me. Not Mayweather. Not Mayweather. So, this part of the world represents. <laughs> The uprisings and the demonstrations that took place in 2020. George Floyd. There were a lot of um, protests around the world. Yeah. Black Lives Matters, NSA. Uh, so they document that part of the uprising of Africans all over, trying to fight for their rights. And the one in the middle is called um, Anagram of History. That was done by one invited artist. If you pay critical look at it, um, there are soldiers, there are police. Boarding guns and other things. Yeah.